Assalamu alaikum. Several laryngeal operations has been developed targeting the arytenoid cartilage with the aim of either reshaping, displacing, or injecting the arytenoid. This presentation is on the arytenoid cartilage external landmarks and surgical anatomy. The external landmarks or surface anatomy of the arytenoid cartilage is necessary in procedures such as arytenoid adduction, surgical procedures, or arytenoid augmentation through the thyroid ala. Uh, either operations done through a small hole uh, less than one centimeter square in the thyroid cartilage or by injection under sometimes ultrasound control. These types of procedures uh, can sometimes be complementary to other operations like thyroplasty or cricothyroid approximation and include things like injection, augmentation of the arytenoid cartilage, cricoarytenoid implant, adduction arytenopexy, and arytenoid thyroid ala application, either the original description by Ishiki or the modification by Haji to placate the arytenoid and the cricoid cartilage. From this anterior view, you can see the arytenoid cartilage on top of the cricoid ring with its two prominent processes, the, uh, the vocal process and the muscular process. To the vocal process that forms the posterior part of the vocal fold is attached to the vocal ligament and just lateral to this would be a part of the thyroarytenoidus muscle, the vocalis muscle, that forms the bulk of the vocal fold. On the muscular process overrides the edge of the cricoid ring to its anterior part will be inserted the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. This is the major adductor that closes up the glottis. To the posterior part of the muscular process seen in this posterior view would be the insertion of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. This is the major abductor of the vocal folds. Between the posterior cricoarytenoid and the anterior cricoarytenoid is a ridge of bare bone uh, covered just by its perichondrium and this ridge of bone would measure about 10 millimeters, the size of um, a rice grain, for example. This is an ultrasound scan of the larynx, horizontal uh, axial scan. You can see the thyroid cartilage in here, and you see how the thickness of the thyroid cartilage uh, anteriorly is much less than its thickness posteriorly. Anteriorly, it measures less than three millimeters, and posteriorly, it measures about uh, five millimeters or so. You see here the arytenoid cartilages with its muscular process laterally and the vocal process medially. You see the vocalis muscle, the dark muscle in here, and just lateral to it, you would see the lateral cricoarytenoid going from the um, muscular process of the arytenoid towards its insertion in the cricoid. This is the major adductor of the vocal fold. Posterior to the vocal, uh, posterior to the muscular process would be the posterior cricoarytenoid covered by the pharyngeal mucosa. The piriform sinus would be here somewhere. The uh, original older versions of arytenoid surgery uh, approached the arytenoid by removing the posterior part of the thyroid ala, and that gave a direct access, wide access to the arytenoid. The modern keyhole techniques would approach the uh, arytenoid uh, cartilage, the vocal, the muscular process, and the lateral cricoarytenoid through a small window, a tiny window created in the thyroid cartilage at this area just in front of the oblique line of the thyroid. And through this tiny window and the thyroid ala,
that measures about 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters you can gain access to the lateral part of the paraglottic space and you identify the muscular process of the arytenoid in here to it is inserted the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle you can also notice here the fibers of the thyroarytenoid muscles inserted into the arytenoid the posterior part of the uh, muscular process is covered by the mucosa of the piriform sinus in here that's why we cannot notice the fibers of the posterior cricoarytenoid until the mucosa of the piriform sinus is peeled off carefully to expose the insertion of the uh, posterior cricoarytenoid to the posterior part of the muscular process and this is a magnified view after uh, peeling off of the piriform sinus identifying the muscular process in here fibers of the uh, posterior cricoarytenoid and the lateral cricoarytenoid and the thyroarytenoid muscles and this arrow would mark where uh, sutures can be placed in order to uh, rotate the muscular process forwards and medially uh, to affect uh, a good vocal fold closure. Where to place this uh, tiny window in the thyroid cartilage? The uh, midpoint between the lower part of the thyroid notch and the inferior edge of the thyroid cartilage in the midline is marked and from which a horizontal line is drawn to intersect with the oblique line of the thyroid. The attachment of the strap muscles will be to this oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. And this would form the upper edge of the window. Um, from the oblique line, you would go eight to 10 millimeters uh, ventrally. This would be the anterior edge of the window. And from this line, you would go again 8 to 10 millimeters this will form the caudal end of the window and the base of the window will be the oblique line itself you don't want to go uh, too much posteriorly because the performed sinus mucosa would be lying here to avoid any penetration of the uh, pharyngeal mucosa this rectangle would mark the anterior window created for type 1 thyroplasty medialization procedure. To gain access to the muscular process of the arytenoid, you need to place a square window posterior to this rectangle window. Both windows would have their upper edge as the mid horizontal line uh, created from identifying the midpoint between the lower part of the thyroid notch in here, the lower edge of the thyroid cartilage in the midline in here. This line would usually measure about 20 to 24 millimeters in males and 16 to 20 millimeters in females. And a horizontal line th through this point usually runs parallel to the lower edge of the thyroid cartilage would intersect with the oblique thyroid line at a point and this point would mark the uh, surface landmark of the muscular process in all females and 85% of the males. There will be a little bit variations about in 15% of the males uh, sometimes just above this point but usually just below it. How deep is the muscular process from the surface of the thyroid ala? About 10 millimeters. Usually the thickness of the thyroid uh, ala cartilage at this point posteriorly is about five millimeters. And a further five millimeters dissection in the paraglottic space would identify the uh, muscular process of the arytenoid in here. So the muscular process is five millimeters from the inner table of the thyroid cartilage and about one centimeter from the surface of the thyroid ala. Another way to check for the position of the muscular process from posteriorly, 
as to mark the midpoint between the root of the superior cornu and the root of the inferior cornu, not the tip, just the root of the corneus in here. And the midpoint should correspond to the position of the muscular process of the arytenoid through which a suture has been placed in here. Once the square window has been created in the thyroid ala, the inner perichondrium can be incised and careful dissection of the lateral part of the paraglottic space connective tissue and fat would be undertaken. This will expose the muscle fibers. The horizontal muscle fibers going from posterior to anterior are those of the thyroarytenoidous muscle. The oblique muscle fibers would be going from posterior superior to anterior inferior are those of the lateral cricoarytenoid attached to the uh, muscular process tip. The fibers of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle will be covered by the mucosa of the piriform sinus and if exposure of these muscle fibers are required, the mucosa of the piriform sinus would have to be carefully peeled off the muscular process. Notice the change in the direction of the muscle fibers of the adductors of the vocal fold. If the procedure is carried out for adduction of a paralyzed vocal fold, then sutures along the muscle fibers of the thyroarytenoids can be uh, placed. This suture uh, from the muscular process towards the thyroid cartilage would mimic the action of the thyroarytenoidus and from the muscular process to the cricoid would mimic the action of the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. Three important um, structures come quite close to the muscular process of the arytenoid and has to be identified and avoided in this type of surgery. The first is the recurrent laryngeal nerve which the recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, courses from outside the larynx deep to the cricothyroid joint in here to form the inferior laryngeal nerve in there. It covers, it, it crosses the fibers of the posterior cricoarytenoid and will be quite close to the posterior part of the muscular process of the arytenoid. The second important structure is the mucosa of the piriform sinus. As you can see, the piriform sinus lies just lateral to the arytenoid cartilage in here. We approach the arytenoid cartilage through a window in the thyroid cartilage through this direction in here, and the piriform sinus will be uh, just posterior to our uh, line of approach. You can see it in the posterior part of the created window. Uh, just posterior to the muscular process, you will find the mucosa of the piriform sinus in here, uh, covering the fibers of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. The posterior cricoarytenoid muscle would be inserted in the back part of the muscular process in here and will be covered by the piriform sinus mucosa. <laughs> the third structure is an artery. The descending branch of the posterior branches of the superior laryngeal artery. The superior laryngeal artery is itself a branch of the superior thyroid artery after it perforates the thyrohyoid membrane. It gives anterior branches and posterior branches. One of the posterior branches is a descending branch that crosses the uh, lateral cricoarytenoid outer surface. So it comes into the field. Our window would be somewhere here. And it's important to identify and protect this branch to avoid troublesome bleeding that would, can be difficult to control through a tiny window. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the external landmarks and the surgical anatomy of the arytenoid cartilage. Assalamu alaikum.